Android 12 is finally here, defining the look and feel of Android into 2022 and beyond. It brings the most sweeping visual overhaul we've seen in more than 7 years, while improving your phone's privacy and bringing useful new features across the board. Today's stable Android 12 launch is just the very beginning of a brand new chapter for Android, especially in terms of design, so what Pixel owners are getting today really is a taste of the future. Take a sec to subscribe to Android Central on YouTube so you don't miss more videos like this one, and we'll jump into what's new in our full review of Android 12. You can't talk about Android 12 without talking Material U. This is Google's new design language and the latest iteration of Material Design, which we first saw way back in 2014. Material design has been changing and evolving ever since then, but Material U represents a very clear version 2.0 of the Google design language. If Hollow in Android 4 was the first great big Android design revolution, and Material design in Android 5 was the second, then this right here is the third. Material U is more colourful, with a selection of accent colours pulled from the material palette to complement your home screen background. It's a great way to make the most personal computer you own even more personal to you, with a choice of subtle or punchy accent colours to match the feel of your background. Android 12 can also apply this theming to certain app icons on your home screen, as well as the ever-present Google search bar. Material U is also curvier and chunkier, with wide rounded corners in contrast to the sharp edges and drop shadows that we saw in earlier iterations of Material Design. Widget's corners are now rounded in keeping with the rest of the UI, the bits of the interface that are lines are now thicker, like the clock hands in the clock widget, the volume and brightness sliders, and the pattern lock. There's a new bouncy, stretchy overflow animation for lists and other surfaces too, which feels much more organic. There are plenty of delightful new animated flourishes too for when you're locking or unlocking your phone, or launching an app from a widget. Google Sans is now the main UI font on Pixel phones, largely replacing the Roboto font that's been with us since 2011. Roboto is still there in places, especially in third-party apps, but pretty much every text label in a system app or Google app now uses the Google font, which has a bit more personality to it. Bigger, bolder text is also a major component of Material U. The system clock here expands to fill the lock screen when you don't have any notifications, and settings page headings expand to fill the top quarter of the display when you scroll to the top, similar to Samsung's One UI, which, as well as being an aesthetic choice, helps with reachability on devices with larger screens like the Pixel 6 Pro. Android 12 also brings big changes to the notification panel and quick settings, which have been given a complete overhaul here in this latest version. There's a slick new animation for pulling down the notification slider, and the quick settings toggles themselves are now shown as rounded rectangles instead of the old circular buttons. There's more to see in general here, including the new internet tab that provides a slightly different way to toggle between Wi-Fi and cellular data, or switch between networks. And if you want to share your Wi-Fi details, it's now possible to do that through Google's nearby share, which could be a bit simpler than trying to awkwardly scan a QR code from someone else's phone. There are new quick settings shortcuts for Google Pay and Smart Home Controls too, and you'll find extra shortcuts to both of these on the Android 12 lock screen once you've got them set up. And the media control cards introduced in Android 11 are now easier to dismiss, with a new option in Android 12 to stop certain apps from cluttering up that area. Elsewhere in the Pixel UI, the launcher has undergone a bit of a tune-up with this at-a-glance section up top, which lets you see more information at once. And there are new widgets too, including this stylized analog clock and weather widgets, both of which take on the colours of your wallpaper. Same goes for the new conversation widget, which can highlight an important chat or group chat from your recent notifications, along with any recent messages from it. It's not quite the same as the rumoured people space widget we were seeing in some of those leaked Android 12 mockups earlier in the year, but it is pretty useful all the same. So on Pixel's Material U in Android 12 really is a whole new UI. It's still basically the same old Android under the hood, but the aesthetic changes here are substantial, making it feel more fresh and modern. How much of this makes it to non-Pixel phones is an open question, of course. We're already seeing manufacturers opting not to include Material U's dynamic colour in their Android 12 updates, so probably things are going to be a bit messy over the coming months, as various companies attempt to pair Material U with their own design language. The next major tentpole feature of Android 12 is privacy. The new privacy dashboard helps you keep tabs on which apps are using sensitive permissions like location, microphone and camera, and how often they're using them. When an app is tracking where you are or using your camera or mic, you'll see a little dot or icon up in the status bar to let you know what's going on and which app is responsible. And for location in particular, Android 12 lets you control how much information apps can get. 
Whenever you're choosing to give an app this permission, you can decide whether it gets to know precisely where you are or just an approximate location. There are also new quick settings toggles to immediately kill the microphone and camera if you need to. It's a continuation of the trend started in Android 10 and Android 11, where you're able to give apps just enough data to work properly without handing over more personal information than you need to. The same privacy focus applies to many of the Pixel's AI features on Android 12, things like Live Transcribe which might handle sensitive personal info. These now run in what Google's calling the Private Compute Core, which is siloed off from the rest of the OS in a similar way to how face and fingerprint data is handled. While recent Pixel phones have fared pretty well in terms of battery life, Google has overhauled its battery settings in Android 12 to give you a clear idea of what's using power. Battery usage for the past 24 hours is shown here, and you can drill down to see more things like screen on time. Tapping an app lets you quickly see if it's optimized for battery life or not, letting you quickly put any troublesome apps or games in battery jail to stop them using power in the background. Speaking of games, Android 12 finally sees the launch of the built-in game dashboard on Pixel phones. You can launch it by tapping this floating control, and from there you're able to track your frame rate, easily take screenshots or videos, or even stream to YouTube Live. There are also some really useful settings tweaks for optimizing for performance or battery life when you're playing, at least that is in supported games. This is one of those features that will need to wait a little longer for developers to fully integrate into their titles. That also applies to another great Android gaming feature, the new haptic APIs in Android 12, which lets developers more easily tie vibration feedback to the audio coming out of your speakers. There are a whole bunch of other features in Android 12 that are just plain useful, or help stock Android catch up with some of the functionality we've seen in phones from other companies. Scrolling screenshot support is finally here, though it doesn't quite work in all apps just yet. At least you don't have to wait when you're taking a scroll shot though, it's captured instantly in supported apps on Android 12. Plus you can now paint emojis, text and other decorations onto your screenshots if you like. You can do more from the recent apps menu too. The recents panel will highlight not just links to web content when they're shown in an app, but also large images, and you can share these with recent contacts or apps or copy them onto the clipboard. It's a real time saver and also super useful if you want to share stuff in a message or a tweet without downloading it to your internal storage first. One-handed mode, long absent from stock Android, is new in Android 12 too, activated via a swipe down on the gesture area. It pretty much works the same way as it does on an iPhone, collapsing the bottom half of the screen down to make the top half easier to reach. Quick Tap lets you assign a tap on the back of your phone to do a bunch of different things, like take a screenshot, open the assistant, or see your recent apps. Worth noting that this works even on Pixel phones without a rear fingerprint scanner, because it's detecting those taps through the phone's other sensors, not the scanner on the back of the phone. Picture-in-picture -picture mode has also been tuned up with rounded corners and the ability to pinch to zoom. Picture-in-picture -picture windows can also be much larger or much smaller in this new version, and it's also possible to temporarily tuck them away at the edge of the screen, which I found is a lot more convenient. I use this feature all the time, so it's great to see it getting some love in Android 12. On a more serious note, Emergency SOS makes Pixel Phone's already excellent life-saving features even better. Enabled by default, this lets you tap five times on your power key to dial the emergency services, either with or without a countdown alarm. It's a great new feature to have alongside things like built-in car crash detection, important medical information, and emergency contacts. Smart Rotation is new in Android 12 on Pixel phones, using the front-facing camera to detect the angle of your face when you rotate. Again, this is another feature that some other manufacturers have had for several years at this point, and it isn't as crazy accurate as you might expect, especially in darker lighting conditions, but I did find it worked reliably on my Pixel 5, stopping the phone from rotating when I was lying down. And finally, the Android 12 Easter Egg. There's a new one every year, and for 2021, it's all about showing off material U and dynamic color. You've got this material-themed clock that explodes into a colorful shower of circles when you turn it to 12 o'clock. Once you've done that, you'll get access to this neat little widget showing you a selection of colors from your individual color palette, which of course in Android 12 is based on your home screen wallpaper. Android 12 is live right now on Pixel phones from the Pixel 3 up, and will be coming to even more devices very soon, including current beta builds from OnePlus and Samsung. While there are plenty of new and useful features, especially on Google's phones, the big deal here is obviously Material U and how that sets the stage for the next generation of Android phones into 2022 and beyond. Hit the comments and let us know what you think of Android 12 so far, and be sure to subscribe so you don't miss our Pixel 6 coverage coming soon. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.